Coming up, we join the Year in Blessings ceremony in Tacloban of the Philippines. And we get to know Cixi volunteer Chen Yanping from China and witness her selfless givings. Welcome to Da Headlines. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mary Lee. In Tacloban of the Philippines, the Tsiji Foundation recently organized a total of six year end blessing ceremonies. Prior to the celebration, Tsiji volunteers in Manila traveled to Tacloban City to help local volunteers prepare for the annual event. But first, we join one of the blessing ceremonies, which was joined by 81 year old Marcelina Canayong. Despite feeling ill, the senior still insisted on coming to the ceremony to donate her filled bamboo coin bank. 2015 marks the second time Tsuji is holding year and blessing ceremonies in Tacloban City. Different from previous years, the ceremonies were a joint effort between Tsuji and local volunteers. We have recruited many like-minded people over the past year, so this year's year in blessing ceremonies in Tacloban City were mostly prepared by local volunteers. This year, Tsuji's year and blessing ceremonies were held at the Tacloban Convention Center, which included up to 3,000 people. Part of the ceremonies, local volunteers gave the venue a thorough cleaning. During one of the year and blessing ceremonies, a senior suddenly lost consciousness. Thankfully, the only ambulance of the local fire department was on site. I told my grandma not to come, but she insisted. I wanted to come here personally because the Tsuji volunteers told me that I can donate my full bamboo coin bank today. In total, Tsuji held six year and blessing ceremonies in Tacloban City this year. It is hoped that the love and compassion from everyone can mend this land, which was once devastated by Typhoon Haiyan. Part of the year-end event, Tsuji volunteers in Manila arrive in Tacloban City to lend a helping hand. Today we are here to prepare the entrance tickets for the upcoming year-end blessing ceremonies. All of us will try our best to finish this task as quickly as possible because we still have other things to tend to on the day of the ceremonies. The volunteers carefully saw 30,000 entrance tickets according to date and time. Next, the volunteers joined a conference where the heads of 138 barangays promised to spread the news at Tsuji's year end events back home. The head of each barangay goes home with tickets for the year end blessing ceremonies. The barangay heads will help us distribute the tickets to residents so we don't have to visit them door to door. In January of 2014, the Tsuji Foundation organized a year and blessing ceremony in Tacloban for the very first time. Despite the poor weather, more than 20,000 residents still showed up. Touched by Tsuji's efforts, these barangay heads are determined to encourage even more residents to join this year's upcoming event. Without the Tsuji Foundation, I think Tacloban City would not be where it is right now. The organization has inspired local residents to change for the better and even help the city recover from Typhoon Haiyan. Also marking the year end and ringing in the new year are Tsuji volunteers in Indonesia. In Bandung, students of a local school put on a sign language performance in recognition of Tsuji's great love. Meanwhile, in Tanju Balai, 26 Tsuji's performed a sutra musical, hoping to inspire and recruit more people to join their ranks. 800 community residents have come to take part in Tsuji's year end blessing ceremony here in Bandung. Many arrived with their bamboo banks, full to the brim with their love to help others in need. The programs we organized today were enjoyed by all the participants, and everything went smoothly. A care recipient even went on stage to express his gratitude to Tsuji. The sign language performance put on by students is a testament that great love knows no bounds and transcends all ethnicities and religions. It's such an honor to attend the Year in Blessing ceremony. I witnessed how people from all walks of life can come together without any distinction. Many 
Meanwhile, in Changjung Balai on Kurman Island, 26 Tsushals opened the year-end blessing ceremony with a sign language performance. I hope more volunteers will sign up to join our sign language musicals. Hopefully next year we will have a stronger and more united team. Posters on display depict Tiji's history from its humble beginnings to the present. Volunteers also invited members of the public to watch the Masters Wisdom at Dawn broadcast. Our volunteers aspire to actualize the Master's Dharma in their daily lives. This is also what the Master's wishes for all of us. The Master's Morning Dharma Lecture benefits us greatly. To spread the seeds of love throughout Indonesia and to help make the world a better place, volunteers called on more people to do good deeds and join them in continuing to do charitable works in the country. It's been more than a month since massive flooding affected Malaysia's Kelantan, and in villages like Manaik Urai, bad air quality, unsanitary conditions and sleepless nights has meant that over 80% of the community is now sick. But all residents can do is pray for help to come their way. Weeks after the floods receded here in Manaik Urai, Kelantan, residents are still living in tents, not knowing how to properly dispose of waterlogged furniture residents burned them, causing massive air pollution as a result. We were given masks and were told that they are not to be reused. We should replace them often. We wear them from morning till night, especially in pharmacies and dusty places. Those who suffer from asthma should be more careful because dust and air pollution can trigger an attack. With the poor and unsanitary living conditions, over 80% of the residents here are suffering from one form of sickness or another. Those especially prone to getting sick are the young and the old. Most of the residents in this area are sick. They are suffering from a cough or diarrhea. Uh, Sleepless nights in the tents have reduced the locals' ability to fight off sickness. Thus, despite being disaster victims themselves, medical personnel continue to visit this hard-hit area to tend to health care concerns. Recently, one of the city's scheduled biannual free clinic in Fallbrook, California, was conducted with the help of medical staff from a variety of different backgrounds, all of whom did their best to bring their love to those in need. Here at the biannual medical clinic in Fallbrook, California, those without health insurance are glad to see Tsuji once again. I learned of this Tsuji clinic because of my aunts. And they have done a very great job and I really appreciate it. Volunteers of all backgrounds come forth to give their time, including dental hygienists from Iraq. I think this uh, community or this organization is a very helpful organization. I was really inspired when I, when I saw the, uh, the ceremony and the, how people, they would like to help um, other peoples. I heard through the program, about the program here through my school, and um, I really love it, the fact that we're helping others and here volunteering our times. Um, and I believe that there is to need to be more of these organizations around here just so we can help the people in need, especially for those that are um, with no well or health insurance. I currently right now I'm helping with the acupuncture station and I really like the fact that like people try for the first time and they really have enjoyed it. A volunteer for the past five years, this time Lee Rio Balbuena, brought her filled bamboo coin bank back to show her love. The last time that Sushi came to Fallbrook, and I'm pretty glad being able to help them since they help the community a lot. Sushi volunteers put on a sign language song in hopes of planting a seed of goodness in all those they meet at this happy event. Herbal tonics cooked with Chinese medicinal ingredients were developed hundreds of years ago to keep people healthy. However, due to the change in times and diets, most people are already getting plenty of nutrition from the food they eat every day. If we continue to add excess nutrients to our body, they will actually become a burden and adversely affect our health. 
It's called Western Jinsen and Prunes for the Liver. This is Wolfberry. Mrs. Xu prepares Chinese herbal tonics for her whole family every winter. When her husband was hospitalized several years back, she would brew him herbal tonics twice a week. When my husband fell ill, I would brew herbal tonics twice a week to help him recover. <laughs> As I'm getting older, I thought I should drink some tonics to keep me healthy. However, the 76-year-old man who suffers cardiovascular disease should not be drinking herbal tonics so carelessly. After I was discharged from the hospital, people told me about various tonics that I should take that could help expedite my recovery. So I just followed their advice. But in less than two days, I would end up back in the hospital. Herbal tonics meant to strengthen our body tend to be oilier and also saltier. Food like that tend to affect our cardiovascular system and increase our blood pressure, glucose, and lipids levels. As it is colder during winter, chances of heart attack are a lot more likely to happen. Because of his misconception regarding herbal tonics, Mr. Xu nearly lost his life. If seniors who suffer heart disease are already taking antiplatelet pills, then they should try to avoid ingredients that will promote blood circulation or strengthen energy. Actually, all patients suffering from chronic illness should be careful when undergoing Chinese medical therapy. For those with chronic kidney disease, we would like them to control their protein intake, which mainly comes from meat. Another thing to watch out of is the purine level, which can lead to gout or acute inflammatory arthritis, if not controlled, or worse, urate nephropathy. Patients suffering from any of the cardiovascular, kidney, liver and gastrointestinal diseases should not be taking herbal tonics. This is especially true for those who have a heart condition, high blood pressure, high blood lipids, high cholesterol, gout, stomach ulcers or duodenal ulcers. Also, those with diabetes or thyroid problems should watch the amount they consume. As Chinese New Year approaches and people start to eat big meals, those with thyroid problems should watch their iodine intake. We will tell them to avoid seaweed and other kelp from the sea. Traditionally, the herbal tonics are meant to strengthen our internal organs and keep us healthy. But due to changes in the times, they might actually become a burden for our body. It comes down to the fact that only by eating what the body needs can we stay healthy. As part of this year's winter relief distribution in China's Guangxi province, we bring you the story of Chen Yanping, a city volunteer from Nanning City. Through the giving of her time, Chen has found a new meaning to her life and plans to remain steadfast on the city path. Here in Nanning City, Guangxi province, Chen Yanping and others are going to visit a care recipient family. Just like visiting relatives, Chen drops by to check on the Wei family every month. In May of 2013, a massive fire changed the family's lives forever. Their skin was covered in burns, there was blood and blisters everywhere. They really had no skin left. Every day, Wei Xiaomeng, the couple's filial son, helps to change his parents' dressings. In his heart, he has only one wish. I just want my parents to get better. Nothing else matters in this world. Hearing him say that, we are very moved and want to give him as much assistance as we can. 
I really see him like one of my own. He's very mature and often tells me not to worry about him. Chen has lived a good life, but joining the home visitations this year, she was reminded of Master Jinyan's admonitions. The master says we don't know if tomorrow will come first or if impermanence comes first. The Wei family really brought forth that lesson. Previous to joining Tsuji, Chen spent her time off doing yoga and drinking tea. However, since 2012, these hobbies were no longer important. When I have extra time, I'd rather be doing to do related activities because I was 43 already when I joined. I feel that I have wasted 40 some years not being in the organization. I deeply feel that I don't have enough time left, like the master says. So, yeah, Completely devoted to Ziji, not only is Chen's husband fully supportive of her volunteer work, her daughter is also involved in Ziji. When not in her uniform, Chen is actually a finance manager and has to look through volumes of paperwork each day. Although my work is fairly busy and I have a lot of tasks to do day to day, but if I am able to manage my time wisely, then I can do anything, just like the master says. She even puts her lunch break to good use. I thought reading the master's teachings was a better way to pass the time than browsing the internet. <laughs> Now in her 40s, Chen Yanping has taken the Dharma to heart and gives within her ability to all those in need. More on winter aid distributions, but in the snowy Henan province, in villages throughout Xuchang County, volunteers brought relief supplies and companionship on behalf of those who've been struggling through the cold winter months. Here in snowy Guichun Township of Henan's Xuchang County, 80 volunteers are bringing the gift of rice and love. Volunteers also carry with them a letter from Master Zheng Yan for the recipients. We need to love and protect the earth and all sentient beings. Only then will the world be at peace. During this Chinese New Year, I hope that everyone can realize a heart of contentment and gratitude with which to pass the days. Volunteers then help recipients carry the heavy bags of rice to their vehicles. As recipients leave the distribution with both hands and hearts full. After the distribution, volunteers visit seniors who were unable to make it to the event, such as Zhang Fu San who lives alone since his son checked into a mental institution. Some seniors really need our care and attention as they live alone and often in impoverished conditions. Despite the cold outside, the love of the volunteers have warmed up hearts and homes and brought hope and happiness ahead of the Lunar New Year. Following the beginning of the new year, city volunteers in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, gave out scholarships to 514 deserving students. In gratitude for this help, the students assisted in setting up the scholarship ceremony venue and also didn't forget to bring their filled bamboo coin bank to help others just like them. City's most recent New Shu Scholarship Award ceremony in District 9 of Ho Chi Minh City was held at Phang Wu High School. As the ceremony was to be held on the second floor, volunteers and scholarship recipients first worked to move everything upstairs. I feel blessed to be able to volunteer today. I feel warm inside. The other volunteers have been very welcoming. It has been a joyous time. For the last few years, I have been helped by many people. Now that I can help others, that is in itself a blessing. It is helping me mature and grow. 
City volunteers in Vietnam regularly pass out scholarships to deserving students. This time, 514 students receive scholarship aid, with many, if not all, bring filled bamboo coin banks to reciprocate the love. Every time I put money into the bamboo coin bank, I feel happy in the knowledge that I can help others. Thank you so much, Tsuji. I add a little at a time. Altogether, I've saved about 10,000 or 20,000 dong. Instead of buying clothiers I don't need, I will put the money into my bamboo coin bank. Many of these scholarship recipients also signed up to be volunteers. Today, I signed up to be a city volunteer. I want to help others that are in the same boat as myself. In addition to scholastic aid, each student also receives a bag of daily necessities and the blessings of countless city volunteers. In 2011, the City Foundation launched the Home Safety Program with the aim of providing a safe living environment for the elderly living in remote rural areas. Over the past three years, the program has greatly enhanced the quality of life for seniors. And recently, volunteers and the Foundation staff arrived in Doshi Township in Hualien County to safe-proof the homes of seniors of the Bunong tribe. Today, staff from the Tsuji Foundation have arrived in the rural township of Joshi to safe-proof seniors' homes. Having suffered a fall previously, Grandma U cautiously tests the new safety device in her bathroom, after which she breaks into a satisfied smile. I am happy and very satisfied. Thank you very much. Look, I can get up much easier now. I am so thankful for this. We hope to create a safe living environment for seniors at home. We hope to enhance their quality of life without them having to worry about their own safety. We are putting preventative measures in place. The pillar is the most important component of the architecture. We will make sure to repair it for you. Grandma Pong has been living alone in this 30-year-old house. A repair team is reinforcing the pillars of the entire structure. Volunteer Ling Yulong, who is in the architecture profession, knows much about home safety. Hence, he has taken it on himself to offer his help whenever he can. Four years ago, we learned that there are indeed many people in tribal villages who are in need of care. Truthfully speaking, they are very blessed to have met Siji, and we are fortunate to have the chance to help them. Volunteers remind the seniors to harbor kind thoughts and make a contribution each day after their prayers. Making simple improvements to provide safety and security for the elderly living in these rural areas, volunteers say seeing the smiles of joy on the seniors' faces is motivation for them to do more to safeguard the well-being of seniors. At the end of the show, we join the year in blessing ceremony in Nanjing, Fujian province, where residents come together to donate their love as well as sign up to join the ranks of the volunteers in hopes of spreading the love to more people in need. We will leave you with these images. Thank you for watching our program. Goodbye.